Google is seen by many as the most powerful company in the world. From search to AI, it seems like they can do anything. But when Google tried to enter the video game industry, it was a disaster. Microsoft has Xbox, Sony has PlayStation, and Google wants in on the action. Gaming is a 200 billion plus industry and continuing to grow year on year. By 2030, it will be worth almost half a trillion. So it's no wonder a corporation like Google sees an opportunity in this growth industry. But to break into such an established space, they knew they needed something different. A marginally different gaming device was never going to work. So many other companies have tried to launch a console, almost all of which have failed miserably. But Google was determined, so they put together a team of thousands of people. And God knows how much that cost. While it was a secret project, that secret inevitably got out. It was known as Project Yeti. Why? Because Yetis are cool. Now, since people hired to work on Project Yeti had a background in the gaming industry, it was kind of obvious what was going on. Then in 2018, the outcome of Project Yeti was announced. It was called Stadia, and was billed as a new kind of gaming system. It was a cloud streaming service, where users would play games online, rather than having to download them. It was like Netflix for gaming, with a subscription service available. However, the games in the library were few and far between. Most games with any hype had to be bought outright. So if we're being honest, Stadia didn't even make the buying of games easier. The only real benefit was the actual streaming, so you don't need to download games to actually play them. But was that enough to lure legions of gamers over to Stadia? Well, no. The problem is, cloud streaming was and is a small market. Most gamers just aren't that into it, simply because it's not needed. To put it bluntly, no one cares. You can't build an entire gaming console on that. It's like building a house on sand. So from the initial launch of Stadia, it was a muted affair. What the people behind it believe could revolutionize gaming turned out to be a damp squib. But I understand why Google might have thought there would be an appeal to Stadia. Using Google's massive broadband, it could be faster and more powerful than any other gaming service. It also doesn't hurt that you can play games virtually anywhere. On top of all that, they planned on developing their own games exclusively for Stadia. In 2019, they even acquired Typhoon Studios, a developer known for their game Journey to the Savage Planet. But Google really is an engineering company, and they had a hard time with the artistic side of game development. Basically, almost all the games they had in production were shut down halfway through, so a big part of Stadia's potential drawing power just kind of evaporated. Still, I think Stadia was more successful than people today realize. At one point, it had more than 700,000 active monthly users. And when you think about it, that just shows how big the gaming industry is. Almost a million users, and it was barely a drop in the ocean. So after a while, it became clear that if Google wanted Stadia to... let's say, gain a market share worth even putting a percentage on, they would need to sink a lot of money into advertising. And when I say a lot of money, I mean a ridiculous amount. But there were also engineering limitations. First of all, Stadia could only be played on Google Pixels. Any other phone would simply not work. And if you want to play it on your television, you would need a Chromecast receiver. Otherwise, the controller would not function. On top of that, gameplay had lag and refresh rate issues. Turns out streaming an entire video game is incredibly difficult. So it got to the point where even the most nerdy of cloud nerds just gave up and bought a traditional console. And instead of fixing these problems, Google gradually lost interest in the whole thing. As time went on, Stadia received less and less attention from higher ups, continuing to be a financial drain. Put this all together and what we see is an abject failure. Then in January of 2023, Google discontinued Stadia, shutting down the entire streaming service. And that must have been an awkward board meeting. Okay, so here's the thing. While Stadia was a failure, I do commend Google for trying to innovate in gaming. Streaming a game is not a bad idea. 
It's just that the technology wasn't quite there yet, and I still think isn't there yet now. While you can sort of stream a game, too many customers don't have the broadband. The access to the internet is just not going to work. So maybe 10 years from now, we will all be streaming our games. But that is not now. And that, more than anything else, is why Stadia failed.